Hi, this is Kent from Man About Tools. This is part two of my series on installing this 1200 gallon rainwater tank. In the first episode, I excavated a level spot beside the shed and poured a curb to hold the gravel that supports the weight of the tank and allows water to drain from around the tank without causing erosion. In this episode, I'll show you how I connected this tank to the gutters. To get the most water I can in our dry summers, I connect the gutters from the larger workshop to this shed, and that gave me about 1,400 square feet of roof. A few years ago, I installed a steel roof on these buildings and added new gutters that have a leaf guard. Because of that, I won't need to add a leaf screen to the downspouts. And that's good because I don't have a lot of distance from the bottom of the gutters to the top of the tank. In the winter when we get heavy rains, I can remove the pipes that connect the gutters and reinstall the aluminum downspouts. So with the tank in place, I replaced the aluminum downspout with 3 inch PVC pipe and I included this sliding gate valve so in the summer, when I want to collect water, I have the gate valve closed, water backs up against the gate into the first flush diverter, and then around the corner to connect to the downspout on the other side. And in the winter, when I don't want to collect water in the tank, I can open this gate valve, water will come down and into the storm sewer. On the opposite side of the smaller workshop, I'll put together another pipe and fitting assembly as the first one. The gate valve and the T at the top of the first flush diverter are designed to fit a Schedule 40 PVC pipe. That's a thicker walled version of the 3 inch drain pipe I'm using for everything else. So I need to first glue in these sleeves or adapters to allow me to connect everything together. I could only find the black ABS sleeves, but they will work fine for this. I just need the right glue that works on PVC and ABS together. And you have very little time, a few seconds really, to get the parts in the right position once you glue them and slide them together. There's no going back for a second try. So planning is key to making this work. I dry fit everything first and use a sharpie to mark what goes where, except the morning I was working on this assembly. I work as a paramedic and my schedule is erratic and not always consistent. I worked a night shift and didn't get enough sleep in the morning, then tried to do some plumbing. Not a good combo. I glued the sleeves into the T at the top of the first flush diverter and that was okay, but right there is the problem. For some reason I was thinking that the T that sits above the gate went in the same orientation as the first flush T and I went ahead and glued them together. And that's the moment right there that I realized what I did. And then some choice words came out of my mouth. Because the first flush tee is a specialized part that I ordered, and getting a replacement would put me back days and days. And there was rain in the forecast. Yeah, I can't believe I did that. Oh. I realized to fix it, I had to separate those two tees. And as I mentioned, the glue is unforgiving. I had to cut off most of the standard tee and glue a new one on the first flush tee on the other side. Later, I'll use a rubber coupling to adapt that messed up end of the first flush tee to the pipe that heads to the tank. Don't worry, I'll explain as I go along and you'll see what I mean. So now back on track, I assemble the rest of the parts in their correct orientation.
This assembly is attached to a pipe that runs down the wall and into a 4 inch drain pipe below ground and it's loosely attached to the wall while I work on the section above it that goes from the gutter outlet to that first T. After that's in place, I added more straps to hold these pipes to the wall and glued a section of pipe on the first flush chamber along with a threaded section for the cap and small drain at the bottom. The ball in the chamber rises as it fills with these first few gallons off the roof. It seals off this dirtier first water when it reaches the top. A filter and pinhole washer slowly allow this chamber to empty, but it requires occasional cleaning. With the new downspout assemblies in place, with the bypass gate valves and first flush pipes, it's time to get the other parts of the tank ready. The tank I bought has a 2 inch bulkhead fitting already installed. It's for connecting more tanks together and for draining the tank quickly, or it can be used for drawing off water. I'll be adding a float and screen to this tank so I can draw off the cleanest water that's just below the surface and away from any sediment in the bottom. So I need to add a ball valve to the existing bulkhead fitting. I first add a reducer down to one and a half inches. I didn't have channel lock pliers big enough for this, so I used a pipe wrench, which is overkill, but it worked. Then I add a short nipple and then the ball valve. I bought some of the tank parts and then decided to make some of them from existing fittings. I'll have links to these parts in the description or in my blog post on my website. Go to manabouttools.com slash tank1200. I cut this hose down to a length I felt was appropriate for the height of this tank. Now I guesstimated this. There's a barbed fitting that goes into the inside part of the bulkhead fitting first. Then the clear flexible hose goes onto that. It was tough to get this on, even with some soapy water as a lubricant. Stainless steel hose clamps secure it, but I'm sure this is never coming off anyways. Then the screen and float goes on the other end. and a lanyard is tied to the float. This will keep the screen up off the bottom of the tank when the water level gets low. I'll need to drill a hole in the tank for this bulkhead fitting for the hose that's connected to this float. I'll use a hole saw for this and drill about 4 inches up off the bottom.
Then the challenge is to get this end through the hole in the tank. Thanks to a few other YouTubers, I'm looking at you Frank Howarth, the trick is to use some string. I taped it to a pipe, then fed that through the hole. Then the other end is attached to the opposite barb. I now pull the string to bring the bulkhead fitting through the hole and attach the nut. I snug this up with pliers. I gotta say, there was some anxiety doing this. It felt pretty tricky the first time, but it went well. I'll be connecting this fitting to the one inch pipe that runs under the curb later. But for now, I'll add an elbow and a ball valve so I can make the tank now watertight. I detailed that in part one of the series. On the other side of the tank, I'll add a gauge. It's a float on a spring-coiled spool that you set to your low and high water points. I added this away from the float so they don't get tangled. To find the best spot for the tank inlet, I sighted down a large speed square. I lined up one edge to the curb and marked the point where the 45 degree edge contacted the tank. That way I could use standard 45 degree elbows to connect the pipe to the wall. I wanted this hole as high up on the tank as possible. I need as much water in there as it will hold. It took some planning, checking, and head scratching to be sure I had this right before I drilled into the tank. On the slow setting, I drilled until the pilot bit pierced the tank, then clicked the drill in reverse to cut the big hole. This keeps the hole saw from grabbing, and it worked great. The rubber grommet fits in the hole and the pipe expands the rubber and makes the seal waterproof. Well, I hope. It certainly is very tight. And there won't be much pressure at the top of the tank anyway. To keep the water from stirring up sediment when the tank is filling, I'll run a pipe to the bottom with two elbows to create a calming inlet. So the water fills the tank from the bottom and doesn't splash. 
I glue up a 90 and 45 degree fitting and glue that to a straight pipe. I cut all my PVC pipe on an 8 inch compound miter saw. It's fast and leaves a clean square edge. Then set this in the tank and mark it on the down facing elbow. I cut this to length then dry fit it. I'll attach these with a stainless steel screw instead of permanently gluing them. For a lot of the sections of the plumbing here, I tried to think about having to disassemble things later. So I only glued what I really needed to, and maybe that's just my lack of confidence. I like these 3 inch flexible rubber couplings with the two screw clamps. They are great for quickly taking sections apart and to manage tough connection points or those that require some flexibility. With my limited plumbing experience, I need all the help I can get. I made an assembly of pipe with a Y to finally connect the pipes from both sides of the building. And that has a 45 degree elbow before it runs into the tank. This part has three rubber couplings, so it went together without too much fussing. And I like that I can take this overhead part of the plumbing off the tank if I need to. For the tank overflow, I'll use standard fittings to create a siphon. It's a series of 90 degree elbows and an angled pipe. When the tank is full, this siphon will skim water off the surface and send it down a pipe on the side of the tank to the drain that runs out to the ditch on the road. On the other end, there's a screen to keep mosquitoes out of the tank. You can buy a siphon formed from one piece, but my supplier was out of stock. I think it might actually be cheaper than making your own when you add up the cost of all those fittings. Now I can drill the hole for the overflow siphon. It's just slightly lower than the inlet hole. And I needed to rotate this around the access hatch wall so it didn't run into the inlet pipe. Next, I'll tie the tether for the float to one of the pipes to keep it up off the bottom. There. That won't sit on the bottom now. I never know how much detail to add to some of these videos. Is it too much? Is there not enough? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.
I'll dry fit the overflow downpipe and temporarily secure it for now. I'll set it in its final position when the fence around is done. And shortly after that it started to rain and water started to fill the tank. With the two T's and the gate valve set up, there might be a bit of water that splashes over when the valve is open in the winter and ends up flowing down and collecting in the first flush chamber. This occurred to me after I put my system together and I realized this is something I should have tested first. So I put together a rig to see how much water might end up running over into the first flush chamber when the gate valve is open. There wasn't a lot, so I'm not too worried about that. In the winter when we get a lot of rain, I'll remove the float ball and slow release pinhole washer so water can drain quickly through the small clear hose into the four inch drain pipe. I then swapped the straight tee for a sanitary tee. It has a sweep or curved section. And what I found was that there was no water dripping from the horizontal pipe. So if I was going to build my system again, I would use the sanitary tees instead of the straight tees. In the next episode, I'll build the tank surround from red cedar and corrugated metal and connect the tank to a pump and tie that into our irrigation system. So be sure to look for that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.